Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 13, Part 3. Welcome to Part 3. In this part, we are going to see how to actually implement the recognition part of the OCR application. We're going to see what we need to do to determine which group belongs with which letter because when we train with these letters that we have provided to the neural network, it just tells us that it has found a match for each group. It doesn't tell us which group belongs with which letter. We need to actually feed the data that we trained it with back into the neural network and see which group each of the sample letters are in. That tells us which group corresponds with which letter. We're going to also look at how this application might be expanded. This is a very simple implementation of an OCR application. OCR would require many additional features to create a full application. And we'll look at some of those that you may wish to add on your own if you would like to learn more about optical character recognition. We begin by looking at the structure of how this program recognizes. Here you see the code that generates the training data. We first calculate how many input neurons we're going to have. This is the downsampled height times the downsampled width. As you saw in a previous part, this would be 8 by 8 or 64. The output neuron is the number of letters we have, so 26 potentially if it's 26 English letters. Then we loop over the entire list of our characters and we retrieve them one by one. Then you see the two nested for loops inside of the, the outer for loop that's counting up to the size of the model, the X and Y for loops, they are basically looping across all of the samples, all of the height and width samples, and creating a value for 0.5 if the pixel is solid, or negative 0.5 if the pixel is not solid. This creates a training. Another very important aspect that the program must perform is to map the neurons. We have the output neurons. Say we're recognizing the 26 Latin characters we're going to have 26 output neurons. However, which output neuron belongs to which character? This is not inherently obvious. We need to query the neural network initially feeding in exactly the training data to see which training element ended up with which neuron after the training was done. We start by creating a character map that holds the number of characters that we were actually training on and we initialize all of the values to question marks. If for some reason, and this should really never happen, we can't find a neuron that learned that particular character, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a question mark. Although if the neuron never learned anything, it'll most likely not fire when the neural network is actually processing. Then we loop through and we begin to present each of these characters to the neural network one by one. So we're using, the same, we're using exactly the same data that we trained it with. We're creating these, these pixel maps using 0.5 for a pixel, negative 0.5 for a non-pixel, and you see like we just did previously. We're basically repeating this process, and we are feeding exactly the data that we trained with back to the neural network to make sure that we know which neuron actually won for each training set. We then call the neural network and we set its result equal to best. That's going to be the best neuron, the one that actually fired. And then we set that map array element for index by best to the letter that corresponds to the training set element that recognized that letter. This is the neuron that represents that letter. This is a very simple OCR program. It is designed really only to allow you to recognize one character at a time. There are many aspects that you would need to consider if you wanted to create an industrial strength OCR application. One of the first things you would want to do is look at a page of text. There are lines. You will need to break the text apart into individual lines. You could use a neural network to do this. This would most likely be a separate neural network from the character recognizer. This is an important concept in neural network programming. You don't want to create one net neural network to do everything. You can create a series of neural networks to perform different aspects of the application. Once you had broken the OCR image 
into individual lines, you may need to rotate those lines if the page is slightly rotated when it was scanned. This could be another neural network. Then you will need to take the individual lines and attempt to find the spaces, both spaces between words and spaces between letters because you want to break the actual image into individual character images that you can then feed into the neural network that we just created and allow it to recognize these characters. Now, of course, you're going to need to implement additional characters such as the numbers and quotations. You also need to be aware of how to recognize the difference between two characters that look very similar. For example, capital zero and capital O and lowercase o versus zero. You will need to perhaps create another neural network still that recognizes the difference between these letters. And you may do it very well by context. If you're right in the middle of a word, for example, most likely it is going to be a lowercase letter o, especially if it was preceded by two other lowercase letters. And it most likely would not be a zero right in the middle of a word. These are all things that the program can be trained on. This program was just a simple introduction into how to create an OCR application, and it is a starting point. You may wish to experiment with some of these other features to create a more complex OCR application. In summary, these are the more advanced features that this program would have to be extended with if you wanted it to be a more industrial strength OCR application that would take pages, potentially faxed or typewritten pages. You would need line detection so that you know where lines begin and end. You need space detection so that you can break those lines up into individual characters to feed to a neural network such as we saw in this part. You would need to be able to recognize capital letters and digits so that you know the difference, worst case scenario, between capital O, lowercase o, and zero. All three of those look the same and it really takes some sort of a contextual processing to know which one it really is. So you would need to look at the context of the letters around the letter that you're currently scanning. Spell checking could also be very helpful because it would allow you to guess better if you looked up words in the dictionary as you try to understand them. This concludes class session 13. In the next class session 14, we are going to review program 2 that was assigned earlier. I will show you my solution to this program. I hope you will continue with class session 14. Thank you! This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.